that's all in there. They have uh, everything about the floods. This town before 1951 and before they put in all the locks and dams, this flood used to flood terribly. If you think of it, when we come down Main Street, look at the marquee at the movie theater. The water was actually up to the bottom of the marquee at the movie theater in one flood. That's how bad it was. It was up to some of the second story windows at some of the buildings on Main Street before the flood wall and before the locks and dams. Um, they have all of that in there, all of that. Uh, we used to have, I call them uh, shanty boat people. Uh, I'm looking at the pictures in here and they look like about 1920s maybe, the shanty boat people. They lived all up and down the Kanoa River. They lived up and down the Ohio River. They have all kinds of stories and pictures and things about all of this era in here. Boat disasters. Many, many boat disasters from Charleston uh, to Kentucky up to uh, as far up as Pittsburgh. They have all kinds of uh, information, pictures, things about boat disasters. Now, I think I said it was the only interactive river museum east of the Mississippi. Did I tell you that? Yeah. And the reason I can say that is upstairs they have a pilot house, an actual pilot house from a boat, and you can go into the pilot house, and there's a projected picture, and you can steer a boat pushing coal barges from Huntington through the locks and up to Point Pleasant, and you can actually maneuver the river and everything else. Unless you're like me. I didn't make it hardly out of Huntington, and I put mine on a sandbar, and that was the end of my boat ride. <laughs> Okay, where are we? Did he come back? Okay, Ed. So I told you about the park, and I told you about this, and we talked about that. Okay. I told you right out a half a mile, about a half a mile out, Crowdell Park, and, and the actual fort. The fort is an exact replica of what's set here. Okay. When you come into Point Pleasant, most people come right down this bridge right here. Well, I don't know if you realize it when you come to Point Pleasant, but when you come down that, you are on the only street in the whole town, the only street in the whole town that runs from one end of town to the other end of town. I bet not many towns can boast that. Now, we've got a lot of streets at Dog Leg Inn, you know, but this one, it's the only street. So when I give you directions, you ought to be able to maybe not get lost. When you come in, Stay on this road. Go six miles up the road. When you get six miles up the road, you're going to see a big sign on the right hand side. It's going to say State Farm Museum to the right. It's also going to say Mason County Fairground, right down the same road. Well, what it doesn't say is this road takes you directly into the TNT area. This road is where Mothman lived. This is his mailing address, right down this road. So, everything's down that road. Six mile from the end of the bridge, up there. The State Farm Museum is awesome. They have brought in houses, and log cabins, a schoolhouse, a church, a barber shop, a doctor's office, all sorts of things from around the late 1800s to the, to the early 1900s. It's all up there. There's a schoolhouse up there that when the door is open and you look in, it's just exactly like the kids have gone out for recess. The school books are still there, the chalkboards are there, the desks are there, their homework assignments lay in there, everything from the 1900s. It is totally awesome. If you saw the Mothman movie, the lady that worked for the newspaper, that's where she worked, right there, Point Pleasant Register. That is right where she was when she wrote all the original articles about the Mothman. It's right there. I didn't talk much about the Mothman, did I? I've taken so many tours, I can't remember now what I've talked about and what I haven't. Um, what? What? I told you about the Farm Museum. You've got to see the Farm Museum. At Christmas, they have 10,000 lights in a light show at the Farm Museum. If you can ever get up there, it is really, really worth it. They have a tractor collection, like John Deere's and all the tractors. They have the old, 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 old tractors up there, steam engines up there. They have all kinds of activities up there. Uh, they have, a, like, a general store up there. You know, they say if you, could, if you can't find it at Walmart, you can't find it anywhere, 
That is so wrong. What they don't have at Walmart, they have at the general store up there. It is awesome. It's just antique type looking stuff, but it's affordable, you know. The old, old type toys for the kids and things, they sell them up there. There is our tourism center right there. Anytime you come to Point Pleasant, please try to make that the first stop. Because if you're here to, to look around and enjoy anything, they can give you all the information about what's going on in the area, what kind of special activity we might have, and the literature is all free. I love them free beats, you know? Yeah. Now, if you want to buy a book that was written by a local person, if you want to buy any kind of different things like that, we have an assortment of things for sale. But as far as the literature on all the different activities that's going on, it's there. They'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Closed on Sunday, opened Monday through Saturday. So drop in. And I suggest that in any strange town that you might go into. If you're going to Boston or anywhere, I'll tell you what to do if you go to Boston. I went to Boston one time. Get on the bean trolley. Get on the bean trolley. Best investment I ever made. Took me around Boston. Showed me all the sights. Because if you go on your own, you're going to miss so much. My son was in the service. I went down to, what, to uh, was it Atlanta? I can't remember. So, sure. Anyway, I was down in South Carolina. It was the same place where they made Forrest Gump. I sat on Forrest Gump's bench, you know, all that thing. And I wouldn't have known any of that. But I talked to the guy that ran the bean trolley, and he told me about everything. Remember I was telling you about the uh, the uh, bridge, the uh, railroad trestle? But well, see, it still goes over there. And it goes way out and ties in on the side of that mountain out there. And that's why the people were so fascinated with it. So I wanted to be sure to tell everybody about that. Can you walk on it? The trestle? Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't. No, there's no walkway. And those trains come flying through there. And there's trains coming all the time. I'm surprised you didn't see one while you were here. Right here behind me, directly behind me, where the park is and the cars are. Let me show you something else first. The house. See the brick house right there? That nice brick house right there. And this place right here. Well, this is one of the other nice restaurants we have here in the town. The house was originally owned by a doctor back in the 20s, but a family bought it. They turned the house into a restaurant. They turned the grill on the corner into the Iron Gate Grill. It's called the Iron Gate Restaurant and the Iron Gate Grill. On Valentine's Day, if I want to keep myself out of trouble, I call down to the Iron Gate house. I make my reservation. I tell them we're going to have the Valentine's special. That's two steaks made into a cute little heart. A little baked potatoes, a little cake on the side, you know. Bring your wife down on Valentine's Day. They have downstairs, they have a piano bar, which is really nice. But me, I don't really like to be around the smoke, so I go up on the second floor and on the third floor, and the house is all set up, and they serve their meals in all the different rooms throughout the house, which is really neat. A little expensive, a little pricey, but for once a year, I guess it's okay. The Iron Gate Grill, it is awesome, it is awesome. They have a bar that goes the whole length of the place and it's got a whole, before you leave, at least stick your head in the door and take a look. A lot of atmosphere there. Uh, the price there is about the same as Bennigan's, so it's really kind of nice. Wanted to tell you about that. Right here's a plaque. Silver Bridge collapsed December 15th, 1967. 46 people were killed. December the 15th, 1967, that was 10 days before Christmas. It was cold, it was winter. It was at a quarter after five in the evening. It was already dark. Traffic was bumper to bumper. Down here, everybody worked shift work. So at five o'clock in the evening, you'd be changing shifts. People that live in Ohio, a lot of them work over here in the factories. They have factories over there, people that live over here work over there. You had all of those people. The main north-south highway came right through this street. You're sitting right under the traffic light, which isn't there, but it was in 1967. This was called Route 17. It's now called Route 35. Route 35, four lane. Well, they, we didn't have that. It came right through here. 
Anybody coming out of the south had to come right across this bridge. Anybody coming out of the north had to come down across this bridge. If you didn't want to cross this bridge, you had to go all the way to Huntington and cross the bridge, or all the way to Parkersburg and cross the bridge. So the shortest way to Charleston for people out of Dayton, Ohio, was to come here, cross this bridge, go to Charleston, go down the turnpike to wherever you want to go. Okay. I had three friends that I met at the plant after uh, when I went to work down there. They were sitting, they, they said they were sitting somewhere there in front of the courthouse, watching the bridge. They said the bridge had lights on it so you could see it across the bridge. They said it was really, you couldn't tell a lot that night. They, everything was decorated in Christmas lights and everything. But they said the traffic was atrocious. The story I heard was the traffic light on the, end, at the other end of the bridge was not working correctly. See, there was a, a light on this end of the bridge, traffic light, and a traffic light on the other end of the bridge. Because Route 7 and 17 dissected over there, the main street here and the main route through here, here. That's why we had traffic lights on the end. The bridge light, the light on the other end of the bridge wasn't working correctly. So traffic was all backed up. 